<laughs> there's a gender neutralization going on even within the language. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed this even during my relatively short life. Mm -hmm. Like 20 plus years ago, if a guy said his partner, that was code that he was I just did that. I told you. I told you about my my, my partner Mike. Yeah, and I go my business partner. Yeah, Mike. it always used to be the it used to be the subtle but not so subtle way uh -huh. of, of saying you're homosexual, same, yeah. same sex person. Mm -hmm. You know, sorry, someone who's attracted to the same sex, referencing their sure. boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. They'd say, oh, you know, my, my partner, and everyone would kind of subtly know. Oh, okay. And then I noticed a shift in the last fifteen years, particularly last ten, mm -hmm. where I noticed started noticing straight people. Starting to use, use that it. term, even if they're married. By the way, homosexual people are mad at the heterosexual people oh, really? for taking their word. <laughs> uh, that's that's. I'm not surprised. And so yeah. I'm like, hmm, that's strange. Mm -hmm. No one used to call guys didn't used to call their wives their partner. Mm -hmm. Women didn't used to call their husbands their partner. Like there's a very specific word mm -hmm. already that exists for that. So why are we going to the less specific, more yeah. nebulous term? Where that could mean anything from your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, spouse, business partner, friend, like it's all the same word. Well, it's because in a, in a female centric and a gynocentric social order and a, a lot of the things that I think that people complain about today as being woke are really more, much more feminine than they are really woke. Mm. And by that, I mean, organizing a society for, for the female psyche is done in the round. Okay. So if everybody is equal, then we should stop referring to each other as man and woman. We should start saying comrade, I guess. I don't know, but like we should start referring to instead of husband and wife, we say partner person. I've noticed person. people, have you know, I've noticed that one as mm -hmm. well. My person, I'm just looking for my it's person. supposed to be gender neutral, but I'll tell you the thing is, is like when, whenever, when it comes to the English language, mm -hmm. you just take out any, any word that has the consecutive letters of M-A-N in it. And then like, instead of fireman, it's fire person mm -hmm. or mail mm -hmm. carrier instead of mailman. But they're doing know? it now that, you know, mm -hmm. actresses, waitresses now. No, no, no. It's actor. They're all actors. Right. Yeah. They're all waiters. That is the masculine. You right? realize that, right? On the plane, so, you know, so, used to so say, it's okay to be a masculine if you're an actor. Yeah. They don't say <laughs> stewardess anymore. Yeah. Yeah, right. no, yeah, 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 yeah. Like flight attendant, flight attendant. <laughs> yeah. So I, I've noticed, like, from the '90s till now, I'm like, why yeah. is everything being gender yeah. neutralized? Like, yeah. what is wrong with? Because they want to remove the man. Because yeah. it, honestly, I, I think it originally started because they, there was this, you know, smash the patriarchy. So what do you do? Um, there's a, I believe it was in the the book 1984, and I'm going to paraphrase this, but George Orwell said, if if thought corrupts language, then language can corrupt thought. Mm -hmm. And so if if um, People have asked me this before. They say like, well, you know, how, what can we do, Rolo? How can we, how can we fight back? You can stop using their language. Yeah. Stop using, the, and I, I, I make very, very distinct differences between us and them. And I do this on deliberately in some of my writing where I say, stop using their language and start, start using our language. Use the language of empiricism. They're using the language of emotionalism. Remember, we were talking about empiricism or objective reality and truth versus emotionalism. There's a language of emotionalism and there's a language for empiricism. So when um, somebody will not, uh, if if somebody, if it was the, what was the meme where the, the guy was at the liquor store and it was, he was transgender, he goes, it's ma'am. Okay, <laughs> you know, yeah. If you go, no, it's sir. And yeah. if you, you uh, if you insist on Hate using, speech. because what it is, is the, 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 if the language, if thought can, can corrupt language mm -hmm. and language can corrupt thought. So what, what it is, is it's a war of emotionalism versus rationalism. Mm -hmm. And so if you're going to, if you concede to use their language, that's dragging you that much more over. And you know what? If you keep doing that, your kids will start using those, those yes. terms and your kids' kids will start using those terms so until it's, anything can become normal. I'm so glad you're making this point. I was actually at um, a conservative Christian conference um, about two years ago. And so they were, people were discussing, um, it was a pretty, very politically charged event and people were, you know, most of the people at the parent, uh, the table were parents and they were discussing some of the things going on in their children's schools and what mm. they're learning. And, you know, they're railing on all of these things. And I noticed one of the, one of the women who was going hardest on it all, she was using, she was respecting preferred pronouns as she was ranting. Mm. And I put out my hand and I was like, you should stop doing that because number one, it's actually really hard to know what you're saying because if you're talking about a man and you keep saying she, mm -hmm. it's confusing to people because <laughs> we're like people yeah, versus yeah, because women. I, I don't, I, I don't know if yeah. you're talking about a male or a female, like mm -hmm. it's really hard to track the conversation. Mm -hmm. But also if you concede that, if you concede that 
this man who's not even in the room. So you can't even say, oh, I'm trying to be polite. Mm. This person is not even here. And you keep referring to him as a she, then you're just undermining your own, yeah. you're undermining your own argument. You're accepting True. their premise that a man can be a woman or that At sex and gender. Ta- tacitly. Are, yes. Yeah, you're, uh-huh. you're tacitly mm-hmm. accepting it. And now you're sort of standing on one foot and you're, it's very easy to push you now because they've already corrupted your own language and your own way of thinking. So mm-hmm. just by making that concession, mm-hmm. as well as some of these other ones, you are kind of ensuring you're still going to lose. Right. You're kind of slightly slowing the loss, mm-hmm. but you're still going to lose because well, you're unwilling to why, just say what That's it why is. I keep saying, like, if, if you are sick, of, if you want to do something about this, mm. you have to stop using their language. And that if that means like misgendering them, then that's what that means. Sorry, but you're going to have to misgender them. That's so interesting. Mm -hmm. Because even the term misgender, Mm -hmm. I would say by calling a man a she, you are misgendering them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because a man is a he. Empirically, that is true. even the term misgender (laughs) is is coded. Yes. Right? There's like a left-wing version Mm -hmm. of misgendering, which is not calling them by what they want to be called. Whereas I would say misgendering actually means using biologically incorrect Mm-hmm. pronouns. Yeah. But people have again conceded that one mm-hmm. to the idea that misgendering is calling Well, which is what they're doing they is they're pandering to mm-hmm. it. And I will tell you this is if there is a war between the uh, like speaking emotional the emotional language versus the empirical language, if you insist on speaking only the language of empiricism. By the way, the language of empiricism always sounds like hate to to <laughs> language. It does because you're not you're not following along with the program. You're mm-hmm. not doing that. That's where shame comes in, or you're you're going to be on the wrong side of history. It's there's no heaven. There's only the wrong side of history. Yeah, <laughs> just saying. But so the uh, so the emotional side really what what will they do is like if you make a I've, I've, I've done this several times on god knows how many different podcasts but if you start making a really good empirical argument about something that people are very emotionally invested in they have their egos invested in that emotional and they got no counter argument that's when they go who hurt you yep well what was your family life mm-hmm. like now they turn into like you know armchair psychologist or have you ever been in love you need to touch grass <laughs> all of those all those i know we laugh at it but it's funny because because what what they're but what they're doing is they're trying to reframe that argument into mm. from an an empirical argument into an emotional argument mm. and if you bite you're done yep. that's it you're dead yep. but the um the uh the emotionalism versus uh empiricism when you stick to your guns and you don't bite on, you know, who hurt you and you say, no, this is the truth. What do you like? I'm going to rope a dope, bring them back into the ring, right? Say, I want you to tell me why, what a woman is, right? I want you to, because when you do that, you force them to have some insight about themselves and their own identity and that ego investment. That is a false ego investment. Mm-hmm. You are actually helping them by not pandering to them. It's tough love. And you might go to jail for it for misgendering somebody, but maybe that's the price you have to pay to say, look, this person is speaking crazy talk. Like this is, you're, you, you want me to agree with you because it will feel better for you, but I know what the truth is mm-hmm. here. I did a, um, I did a, uh, like two, two years ago, three years ago, I did a, a, an interview with Michaela Peterson. Okay. Yeah. And I think I saw that. I think after uh, she was, she was interviewing uh, with Chris Williamson right after that. And she says, you know, I interviewed with Rolo and everything. And, you know, he made some good points, but I didn't feel really good after that. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm doing my job. Right. <laughs> awesome. Because, because I don't care. I, like, that's not the point. I'm not here to make you feel good at the mm-hmm. end of the thing. I want to educate you. I want to wake people up. Do you think comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable? Do you, do you think that's why there are people? people out there who just run with the idea that you just hate women. Oh, they always do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, bec- and that's, again, that's because I'm the language of empiricism will always sound like hate to the language of emotionalism. Mm. So the people who want to say, Oh, Rolla just hates women or the red pill, those red pill guys, yeah. <laughs> meaning me, but those, like those red pill guys, those red pill, those guys. Red pill guys, they yeah. hate women. It's like, no, we don't hate, like the red pill. It doesn't exist so that men will hate women. It exists so that men won't hate women for what they can never be to those guys. It's an it's a form of education. Mm-hmm. It's uh I, I look at it this way, the red pill is like fire. Okay. You can use that fire to heat your home, cook your food, you know, do whatever you you know, do something beneficial to yourself. Or you can use it to set yourself on fire and set your neighbor on fire and set the neighborhood on fire and set his house on fire as well. It's all an application. Mm-hmm. And that's where people really they think that because it can be used for 
for manipulative, selfish purposes, that therefore it, it must be a net negative to society because it should be whatever I say it should be. No, it is what it is. It's all just like whether it's whether it's pro-social or anti-social is all in the application. Yeah. 